beauticians. Ah, uh, thanks for watching. Excited to get to work with you all again. We're getting into lesson 20. Um, you all are almost at the end of the module, so great work. Keep it up. We are going to uh, get into some awesome problem solving. We're going to be taking a look at some story problems, and you're going to be solving two-step word problems, and you're going to be showing your thinking using tape diagrams. The cool thing about tape diagrams is that they're a visual representation of information that you've been given, or even information that you um, need to figure out. It's just a really clear visual to help you keep track of where you're going. So let's take a look at some. So for our first problem uh, today, we have a bit of a mess on our hands. Let's see what's going on in this problem. 18 cups are equally packed into six boxes. When we see this word equally packed or equally shared, I want you to immediately start thinking about division. This is going to be a division problem because we're equally packing the cups into boxes. Two boxes, oh dear, of cups break. How many cups are unbroken? Okay, so here's where that two-step problem solving comes in. We're being told that two boxes of the cups break. But we're not being asked how many cups break. The final question that we're being asked here is how many cups are unbroken? So please pay special attention to the fact that the final uh, answer that we need to give is showing how many cups are unbroken. Okay, so we are going to draw a tape diagram. Keep in mind a tape diagram is just a nice rectangle chopped into bits. That is showing us a really clear visual of the information that we're given in this problem. This whole rectangle, friends, represents our 18 cups. This is our whole 18 cups. We know that our 18 cups are being equally packed into six boxes. So what that looks like is that we need to chop this rectangle into six equal parts. So I have one, two, three, four. Oh, goodness. These are supposed to be equal parts. I know they don't look that way, but let's please pretend. Um, so I have 18 cups spread evenly across six boxes. Let's write the number sentence that supports that. That looks like 18 divided by six. So we're spreading 18 evenly across these boxes. What are we going to have inside each box? We could go ahead and share 18 evenly across all six of the boxes until we pack 18 cups across but at this point I'm hoping that everyone sees that when we spread 18 evenly across six boxes what we're looking at is three cups in each box we have more information though two cups unfortunately for the receiver of this package. Two cup, I'm so sorry, not two cups, but two boxes. Well, two boxes are broken, so sad. Out of our one, two, three, four, five, six, we know that two boxes are broken. And this is where we're going to have to use our critical thinking skills. If two boxes are broken, how many boxes are not broken? Well, that looks to me like one, two, three, four of our boxes, thank goodness, are unbroken. They are in good shape. So we have two boxes here that are broken. What we're looking at essentially is six minus two. Two broken, six minus two is four. One, two, three, four, beautiful. Um, four of those boxes are unbroken. So, I mean, unbroken, yeah, we'll just, I'm going to use the same language that we have in the problem. Okay, so ultimately, my friends, we're looking at 18 divided by six, that is three. Um, our question is, how many cups are unbroken? We know there are one, two, three, four boxes that are unbroken, but we want to know how many cups. Well, I see three cups in each of our boxes. How many boxes do we have? We have four. 
So in order to find out how many cups are unbroken, we're looking at three times four. We can count, we can skip count by threes here. Three, six, nine, twelve. Beautiful. So the good news is twelve of the cups are unbroken. This is a really great problem. Let's check out one more here, friends. Okay, we are going to look at one more problem here. Uh, this problem, we are going to change the name to our principal. This problem, we will think about Dr. Allison buying plants. Okay, let's go ahead and read this. Dr. Allison buys seven plants for his garden. Each plant costs $5. The next day, he buys a rose bush that also costs $5. How much more do the seven plants cost than the rose bush? Ooh, I'm underlining this question because this is what we're essentially trying to figure out here. Okay, so let's go ahead and organize the information that we've been given into a tape diagram. I am choosing green for this first tape diagram because we're talking about plants and I feel like that makes sense to my brain. So this whole tape diagram represents the plants how many plants do we have? We have seven plants. And in order to show our seven plants, we're going to chop this rectangle up into seven equal pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. We are also given this information. Each plant, seven plants keep in mind, each plant costs $5. So, as you can see, I'm going to go ahead and label within each piece of our tape diagram the fact that each of our seven plants costs five dollars. Okay, the next day he buys a rose bush that also costs five dollars. So let's go ahead and make another tape diagram. This one's going to look very different. This is just going to consist of one five dollar rose bush. Very different than our plants. You can see that we have a lot more plants than rose bushes, but something that I notice across the rose bushes and the plants is that the plants and the rose bushes cost the same amounts. Okay, now we have to think, how much more do the seven plants cost than the rose bush? Wow, in order to figure out how many, how much money was spent on the plants, it looks like we need to consider seven copies of five dollars. Seven times five dollars. I can, we can do skip counting by fives seven times, which looks like five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Seven times five, my friends, is 35. That means that $35 were spent on the plants. However, the question is asking how much more do the seven plants cost than the rose bushes? So we have $35 dedicated to plants. And how many, how much money was spent on the roses? Well, five dollars were spent on roses. In order to consider how much more money was spent on the plants than roses, we can subtract these numbers. You can line them, them up vertically or horizontally. 35 minus 5 is what we're looking for. And I'm pretty sure that a lot of us can do this in our head. If we were to take five ones from 35, what we are left with, friends, is $30. So our final answer for this problem is $30. Great work. Your mission, my friends. Complete number five and show it to Mrs. Gilmore. Share today's secret word with Mrs. Gilmore. Finally, you will log into Google Classroom for your extension activity. I think many of you are seeing that our secret word for today is jellyfish. Great work, mathematicians.